guys getting more comfortable now. You know, understanding, watching more film, asking more questions. Uh, you can see it in practice, the intensity. Uh, you know, it was new, 13 new guys. Everybody trying to get familiar with one another. You know, they're coming from different schools where they were actually the guy on their teams. And uh, different city, different, different coach. So just trying to get used to how I coach, my system, and uh, our culture here. And it's, gotten, it's getting better. You know, last year was just like this year, honestly. We got guys here later, and we're still building the team as we go. And we got guys late again this year, but the difference is this team is more connected. You know, it's more about the team than it is about individuals, so the guys are further along. And, um, you know, we'll see. I'm saying that now, but then when the game starts, it could change. But for what I'm saying right now, last year's team was, you know, early on, they were trying to still figure things out. I think these guys are figuring it out a lot sooner. And you mentioned last time, you called it the honeymoon phase, what's going on right now. What can you do from like last year's experiences to kind of transition to be better from the honeymoon phase to the actual thing? There's no way around it. There is no way around it because everybody's happy before the season starts. And then someone is always going to be disappointed with playing time or shots or minutes or whatever. And then you have to deal with it accordingly. And uh, it's just how it is. There's no way around it. Any idea on starting five we might see Sunday? Um, starting five we might see could be uh, Quinterly, Caleb Mills, uh, Jaquan, Jaquan Walton, David Jones, and uh, Jordan Brown. That could be the, the five. Along the lines that you just talked about, so many of these guys are the leading scorers on their team. Is this maybe your toughest task in your career to get these guys to accept roles? Because a lot of them are going to be lesser than they've been elsewhere. The sacrifice that they've shown Thus far, again, the honeymoon period, it shows, like it shows that they're trying to share the basketball and no one really cares about what they did before. They want to win and get on a, a bigger platform and then get deeper into the tournament so that they can be showcased more. So I haven't seen anyone try to take it upon themselves to be like, hey, I averaged 18 a game last year or 16 a game last year. I deserve to shoot the ball. I haven't seen that yet. But it is going to be a problem if the mentality changes once the season starts. I think I want, obviously, every coach wants to see what you teach in practice. Defensively, we get after people. We want to be able to defend people without giving up the paint and without fouling and uh, make them take tough shots. And then offensively, we want to get the ball up the court, score in the first six, seven seconds. And if we don't, execute. I think that's what I really want to look for because good teams, they're disciplined on both ends of the ball, and that's what we want to be. Right now, we're better because we got length and we got guys with the mentality of defending. You know, the team last year, it's hard to, you know, it's hard to beat what they did. They had 26 wins in the conference tournament championship. So, but looking at this team with the size and the length and the guys that can play multiple positions, this year's team is better defensively. Offensively, last year, the team got a slow start, but by the end of the season, they were clicking. It's going to be another slow start offensively, or you think they're going to ease into a better offensive product to start the season? It's going to be hard for me to see this team struggle offensively because of all the weapons that we have. Uh, stranger things have happened, but I don't, I don't see us struggling to score. You know, I just, I really feel like we will be able to, to do that. Do you feel like you need, with these guys to bring in, that have had big goals in other places, is appropriate ego the right term of like, okay, they know they're that guy every time they touch the ball, but they also can't convey that too much for the collective good of the team? Yeah, for sure. I think it's exactly what you said. You got to get these guys to kind of, have the vision of I'm going to bring my talent to the table to make us better, not just me. And with the individual talent, that means that, and the best thing that, about the offensive side is when you can get one guy that can break his man down and get to the second guy, that puts us in a great position every possession. We have multiple guys that can beat this man off the dribble, get into the paint. Now it's about the decision making and, and passing. So, yeah, I, I like what we have and, uh, and what we're trying to do because your guards have to be able to live in the paint have to be able to get to the basket whenever they want and finish. And we've seen the guards over the years that have won it all. Teams, they've had really good guards. And you've talked a lot about kind of tying this program's past to its present. Um, Andre Turner and his team coming in here, third straight year. What does that mean to you and what's your relationship like with Andre? 
It means a lot because it's, uh, you know, a, Memphi a fellow Memphian, fellow Tiger uh, that's um, doing something special at Lane College. And then Andre Turner was like one of my favorite players growing up. He's like well known around here. He's a good guy. And uh, whenever he comes back to the building and to the city, it's always special because he has so many fans himself. And um, it's always special for me. I think the attitude changes a little bit until the team starts to form who they are because it's only Malcolm and Jaden from last year's team, so they don't have the same mentality because they're different. But they're doing winning things, you know, about on and off the court to try to help themselves understand that we want to win. We might not have the magnitude or the mindset of how you guys had last year playing against Houston or Tulane or FAU because we're not familiar with those teams, but they're going to get familiar really quickly. Yeah, no, I feel good about that because that's what we work for. That's what the work is put in for, is for, or for those reasons. But you have to win to get your respect. We can't just talk about it. Put together a great schedule for us, really good schedule, non-conference, because we have, we have to have that, and we just have to go and represent. If you take care of your business, we understand that, then you get that respect. But I do like them talking about us because we, we have earned that from what we've done over the last four or five years. I think just guys just meshing, like, you know, coming together and really liking one another, hanging out together off the court more, um, talking more in the locker room, out on the court. I can just see that they really enjoy being around each other first. Then they, they enjoy playing together as well. I think it's a little early. You know, you, get, you know David Jones came the latest, and uh, he's trying to impose his will, but, you know, he just got here. But there are a lot of guys that really care. Caleb Mills is trying to emerge overall as the guy to try to get everybody together and, uh, and get locked in. And then after that is Jaquan Walt. Hey, it seems like two of your biggest passions, obviously, are helping you know, young men mentoring mm -hmm. them, obviously this program, bringing it back up. Um, when you've got a guy like Mikey Williams who you want to stick beside, do you think it's, it's kind of tough, right, when he has – they're adding felony charges. Is it, is it tough with the image of the program? I don't, I don't think it, it affects the program at all. I think this, this young man obviously is going through something, and he hadn't been found guilty of anything. So we just have to continue to support him. Have you decided who will be in your seat those first three games? I have not yet, but I think it's, it'll be Coach Stansberry with his experience. But it'll be a, a group effort of guys that understand. Obviously, Faraji has been, been around me the longest, so he'll be involved. Everybody will be involved on the staff, but I think Coach Stansberry probably, probably will be the one. Well, we need leadership, you know, on and off the court. And uh, he's had an unbelievable, if you want to call this training camp, what we've had, you know, before we get into the season, he's out there dominating. And he's looking the way that we need him to look, you know, getting up and down the court, being vocal, protecting the rim, and then scoring for us on the block. He's in California. He's just taking online courses. He's in California just, you know, because he has to be there and uh, just taking online courses. So he was never allowed in the uh, facility or, 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 you know, with the players here. But he's in, he's in California right now. Yeah, no, he's in California. Man, I'm just praying. I'm still praying about that. We're, you know, I'm not going <laughs> to. There is no deadline. You know, the NCAA don't have a deadline. No. <laughs> we do.